Welcome back. All right, we are going to review seven games from tonight in the National Hockey League, which isn't bad for a Tuesday. Uh, and then we got five games tomorrow and ten games on Thursday, although the latest start on Thursday, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. So kind of odd, but it's an early night on a Thursday. Weird. All right. Starting things off today, uh, the Oilers and the Ottawa Senators. I'm wearing Oilers, and I made sure I wore the reverse retro because that's the magnet I used. Um, Skinner versus Olmark in this one. Batherson has a rush chance that's held. And then at 346, Evan Bouchard with an absolutely fantastic goal. He goes end-to-end. -end. It's a beast mode goal, and that was the first shot that Olmark faced. So welcome to the game. Uh, Dreisaitl and Pog Colson with the assists on that one. Uh, shots are 4-3 to three for the Sens at 6 minutes. The Oilers press at the half. There's a near miss for Dreisaitl. The Oilers are in complete control at this point. Kulak has a one-timer that's held as it continues to be all Oilers. Shabbat has a chance held when the Sens get some pressure. They get some more pressure, and at 15-40, uh, Stutzla scores from Batherson and Jensen. And that's a goal from the slot on a pretty nice pass by Batherson. However, it does not stay tied for long. McDavid, uh, after a turnover, he buries one on the cycle. Pod Colson and Bouchard with the assists at 16-15. Vasily's finding out that if you play on a line with McDavid, you're going to get your share of points. So it's 2-1 for the Oilers there. 119 left. The Oilers get a power play. Then there was a face-off violation by Giroux uh, two seconds later. They don't call that very often. I don't know if it's that guys don't put their, their gloved hand on the puck on face-offs very often, so they don't need to call it. But gutsy call. It's, it's the right call technically. That is the penalty. You can't put your glove on the puck um, on the face-off, and he did. And so it's 5-on-3 for a minute 58. That's way too long for Edmonton. McDavid scores on a tic-tac-toe play. Bouchard and Dreisaitl with the assist at 19-19. It's 3-1 to Edmonton after one. Second period, Hyman's denied from the slot. The Sens do finish the kill. They clear the puck after. And that feed to Norris. There's a near miss there. The Sens then draw a power play. That's killed off. And at 4:39 on a net drive, Dreisaitl scores on the backhand. McDavid and Henrique with the assists. It is 4-1 to for the Oilers. The Sens press at six and a half minutes, but the shots are four to two for the Oilers, eight and a half minutes in. There's a crossbar for Amadio on a rush. Norris has a wraparound that's held. Jensen gets shaken up. He was hit into the rounded glass. You know, right next to the bench there, we're used to almost like decapitate people. It's just scary. So the rounded glass makes it better, but I'm sure it still hurts like heck. Uh, 4.5 seconds left. The Oilers get a power play. So they're up four to one after two. They've got a power play rolling into the third period. The Sens finish the kill, and they only allowed one shot. There's a press by Ottawa at two and a half minutes. The shots are three to two for Ottawa, four minutes in. The Sens press at seven minutes. There's a power play for Ottawa. That's killed off. And then on a net feed, uh, Newton Hopkins tips one in. Ryan with the assist at 11.50. That makes it five to one for the Oilers. We get two minutes of four on four. Amberson has a one-timer that's kicked aside. Pretty loud. Let's go Oilers chance. But while those are happening, the Ottawa Senators score. Uh, Norris deflects one in. Jensen and Kachuk with the assists at 1736. They reviewed it to see if it was a high stick. I don't know. You could have made the argument either way. My guess is that uh, there wasn't one that definitively proved it was a high stick. So it's a good goal. It just makes it a little bit closer. The final score in this one is 5-2 to two in favor of the Edmonton Oilers. They go to 10-8-2 with the win. With the loss, Ottawa 8-9-1. and one. So again, Ottawa just... November, man. Uh, shots on net, 14-12 Edmonton in the first, 9-5 Edmonton in the second, 12-8 Ottawa in the third. Final shots, 31-29 for Edmonton. Power plays the Oilers, 1 for 3, Ottawa 0 for 2. The hits, 35-17 Ottawa. Skinner saved 27 out of 29, one of his better starts this year. Olmark, 26 saves on 31 shots. So that's going to hurt Olmark's overall statistics. All right, next up, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh. This ended up being a pretty entertaining game. Uh, Vasilevsky versus Jari. Pugliarvi's denied in close. The Penguins press at two and a half minutes. The shots are three to one Pittsburgh at three minutes, so they have the fast start here. Nieto has a rush chance that saved. Uh, Pens press at eight minutes. We get a power play for the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's killed off. Uh, the Bolts press after it's done. Achari tips one wide on a rush. And then at 12.05, Pugliarvi, who's been playing well lately, he opens the scoring from Pedersen and Poulin. So that's a triple P right there on the scoring play. Uh, the Penguins look for another. Uh, there's more more Penguins pressure with five minutes left. The Bolts then get another power play. 
That was killed off, and again, after it's done, Tampa Bay gets some pressure, but it's 1-0 Pittsburgh after one. Second period, early jump from Tampa. Uh, there's a post for Crosby from the slot. Radish fires one wide as they press. Hagel uh, fires one wide on a rush. Jari holds for a shift change. They were pinned down for a bit there. Jari makes the, the hold so they can get a new line out there. Uh, Paul couldn't bury one in close. That puck's held as well. Penguins press with eight minutes left. But the shots are 6-1 to one for Tampa with nine minutes left. I didn't know if they were counting those shots necessarily all that accurately at points either. Where it felt like Tampa Bay had a bunch of shots. And I look at the app and I'm like, but it only recorded one shot. Okay. I mean, maybe they're going wide. Uh, the Bolts press. There's more blocks by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, a lot of guys I think would have needed ice packs after this game. They blocked a ton. Uh, Bolvillier is denied on a rush. We then get a power play for the Penguins, and they score on it. So, Raquel, on a great pass by Crosby, buries one. Grizzlick with the other assist at 13.05. It's 2 to nothing for the Penguins. Uh, the Bolts press with 5.5 minutes left. Point has a backhander that's held with 3.31 left. The Penguins get a power play. That's killed off, but it's 2 nothing Pittsburgh after two. Third period. Uh, Point has a wrister that's kicked aside. The Bolts press at a minute and a half. We get a power play for Tampa. Kucherov is denied from his spot. Uh, the power play is killed off, and then shortly after it's done at 541 point on a backhand from in close, he scores from McDonough and Radish, and it was a filthy play by point there. Uh, welcome back to the Bolts. Uh, the Penguins press to respond. They don't get shots, though. The shots are 8-1 to one Tampa with 8.5 minutes left. Bolts press to tie it with 7.5 minutes left, and they get it at 1249. Hagel goes short side, and it goes in off Jari's stick. Sorelli with the assist there. The game is tied at two. Penguins press with two minutes left, but we're going to overtime. Uh, in the overtime, the Bolts controlled early. Uh, Point has a rush chance that's defended. The Penguins take over. They end up giving the puck back. Gensel has a shot that's blocked as the Bolts press. And then at 358, Point just kind of puts one around Jari and into the net. Uh, Mosier and Geeky with the assists. Tampa Bay wins in overtime 3-2. to two. They go to 10-6-1 with the win. With the overtime loss, Pittsburgh drops to 7, 10, and 4 on the season. Shots on net, 10, 9, Tampa in the first, 12, 6, Tampa in the second, 12, 4, Tampa in the third, and Tampa Bay only had one shot on net during the overtime. That's all they needed. Final shots, 35 to 19 for Tampa. Power plays, the Bolts go 1 for 3. Pittsburgh goes 1 for 2. The hits, 15, 11 for Pittsburgh. Vasilevsky saves 17 out of 19. And Jari had a good night, 32 saves on 35 shots. So if you want to find some positives for Pittsburgh, Tristan Jari had a good night. That's that's as far as I can go with that right now. All right, next up, Minnesota and St. Louis. Uh, Minnesota really raised their game in the third period. Uh, up until then, I was kind of like, eh, is Minnesota slipping? So it's Gustafson versus Bennington, keeping in mind, of course, that the Blues get Robert Thomas back tonight. Definitely seemed like they play better with him in the lineup. Blues had the early jump. They were leading in shots 4-0 and only two minutes in as well. Blues were also limiting chances for the Wild, playing really good defense. Teams exchange rushes. The Blues press at the half. Freddie Goudreau's denied. Bennington holds. And then at 12-24, Hartman puts one through Bennington from the right circle. Uh, Rossi with the assist. Uh, and even though it goes through Bennington from the right circle, it was it was a nice goal by Bent, by Hartman to make that work. Uh, 140 left, the Blues go to the power play. So it's 1-0 Minnesota after one. Uh, and then to start the second period, the Wild finish the kill. There's a press by Minnesota at two minutes. The puck ends up going in the net after the whistle has sounded, so no goal there. Uh, more pressure by the Wild at three minutes. And then at 448, Perunovic ties the game. He scores from Cairo and Bolduc. The shots, nine minutes into the period, are six apiece. Uh, Boldy has a shot that's held as the Wild gets some pressure. Johansson to Hartman, that gets blocked. There's a delay of game call, gives the Wild a power play. That one's killed off. Two shots on that during the power play. Blues press with three minutes left. Things are pushy at the horn, so we start the third period four on four. Um, during the four on four, not a whole lot of opportunities. The Wild would press at three and a half minutes, keeping in mind it's still 1-1. There's a power play for Minnesota. Boldy. Uh, can't bury one in close. And then just as the power play comes to an end at 6.07, Kaprizov with a perfect tip in front gives Minnesota back the lead. Middleton and Boldy with the assist. Middleton's getting a ton of points, comparatively speaking with what might have been expected of him this year. Uh, so the shots are 5-3 to three for the Wild at 7.5 minutes. We then get a power play for the Blues, and they score on it. It is Neighbors tipping one in close, but Janavich and Thomas with the assist at 10.37. So Robert Thomas with a helper in his first game back. The Blues press with eight and a half minutes left, but Brodeen would put one through Bennington from the left circle. And this one, I believe there was a screen in front as well. 
Spurgeon and Johansson with the assists at 13.44. So St. Louis uh, tied it, and Minnesota gets the lead right back. Wild then look for another. Chen fires one wide on a three-on-two rush. The goalie uh, pull happens with a minute and 53 seconds left. And at 18.37, Kaprizov hits the empty net to secure the victory for Minnesota. They win this one 4-2. They go to 12-3-3 with the win. With the loss, St. Louis 8-11-1 eight, eight, on the season. Shots on net, 9-7 St. Louis in the first, 11-8 Minnesota in the second, 10-7 Minnesota in the third. Final shots, 28-24 for the Wild. Power plays, Minnesota 0-2, St. Louis 1-2. The hits, 17 apiece. Uh, Gustafson, 22 saves on 24 shots, and Bennington, 24 saves on 27 shots. So, yeah, Minnesota finding ways to win. All right, next up. Uh, the Florida Panthers and the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets get some measure of revenge tonight, and now they won't meet each other again unless they meet in the Stanley Cup final. So, it's Bobrovsky at one end and Hellebuck at the other end. Uh, early press by Florida. They had the only shot on net three minutes in. There's Things are pushing a hold by Bobrovsky, but the shots are 4-1 to one for the Panthers at the 6.5-minute mark. Uh, Ehlers to Nemesnikov, that chance gets blocked. Panthers press uh, with 7.5 minutes left. And at 14-13, uh, Connor roofs a backhand in close to open the scoring for Winnipeg to make it 1-0. Uh, near miss for Pionk and close as the Jets press looking for another. And then Shifley wires one from the left circle to make it 2-0. Uh, Velarde and Morrissey with the assists at 17-40. The fans then call one. The referee does not. It is 2-0 Winnipeg after one. Second period, Barkov has a rush chance that's saved. Bolinskis has a shot that's, uh, that's held. Uh, Hellebuck really good at this point in the game, and just generally tonight, Hellebuck had a good game. Even though the numbers would tell you by save percentage it wasn't necessarily great, I, I thought he played well when he had to. Uh, shots are 3 nothing. Florida at 3 minutes. We get a power play for the Jets. That becomes a 5-on-3, and the Panthers do kill that off. Uh, we then get 2 minutes of 4-on-4. Four four. Things get pushed on a hold by Bobrovsky. These teams didn't really like each other in this game. It's, there was some dislike between the two. Uh, power play for Florida, that's killed off. Uh, the Jets then go to the power play. Velarde's denied and close. And then Shifley buries a one-timer at 15-41 to make it 3-0. Ehlers and Morrissey with the assists. But it's Florida. And at 17-24, Greer has one that pinballs in off Lowry's leg. They all count. He gets this one from Schmidt and Noshek. So it's 3-1, and that's your score after the second. And you never count down Florida because they're pretty good at comebacks. And they're the defending champions. So third period, early press by the Jets. The Panthers press at two minutes. The shots are two apiece, four minutes into the period. Uh, there's a post for Barkov. The Jets clear. Uh, post for Nemesnikov. And then there's an offensive zone penalty by Perfetti that ends that press by the Jets. And Florida makes them pay. Reinhardt scores from Kachuk and Barkov at 7-10. The Jets then draw a power play. Uh, that's killed off kind of, sort of, in that it's killed off, but then six seconds later, Winnipeg does score. It is Shifley with the hat trick goal, so the hats rain down. Connor and Ehlers with the assists at 9.46. Uh, with 4.04 left, the Panthers get a power play, and you know they're pulling the goalie, so they do. And so six on four, Florida gets the goal. Kachuk scores from Bennett and Verhage at 16.38. Velarde then fires one wide on a rush, as now it's well, you just you just lock it down from here. But with 2:15 left, the Panthers go back to the power play, meaning you pull the goalie again. You go six on four, which is how they scored before. And now they're trying to tie it. But uh, Morgan Barron hits the empty net from Lowry at 18:23, so that's a shorthanded empty netter, and then he does it again at 18:44. It is a shorthanded empty netter by Barron. The first one assisted by Lowry. The second one's all him. And then the Jets finish the kill, and they win the game 6-3. to three. They go to 16-3 and three on the season. Florida drops to 12-6-1 and one on the year. Uh, shots on net, 8-5 Florida in the first, 11-7 Winnipeg in the second, 11-8 Winnipeg in the third. Final shots, 27-23 for the Jets. Uh, power plays, 2-4 for four for Florida, 1-4 for four for Winnipeg. The hits, 36-20 for Florida. Bobrovsky saves 21 out of 25, and Hellebuck, 20 saves on 23 shots. That being said, I need to change boards. Okay, three more games to go, starting with Anaheim and Chicago. And I'll be dipped. This was actually a pretty entertaining game. So Gibson versus Soderblom. Uh, early jump for the Ducks, but the shots on that are only one apiece, three and a half minutes in. So they're not getting a lot on the net early. Uh, Kaiser has a shot that's held as the Hawks get some pressure. 
Uh, Vlasic has a rush chance that's kicked aside. The teams exchange turnovers. Shots are 5-3 to three for the Hawks with nine minutes left. And there were a lot of whistles in that first period, especially in the first half. Uh, crossbar for Hall as the Hawks get some pressure. A net feed to Reichel gets blocked. The Hawks press with five minutes left. Eventually, they score first. Uh, Dickinson buries a cross-ice pass. Bedard and Brody with the assist at 17.03. I will say this. Bedard has some chemistry with Dickinson. That's what we learned tonight in this game. Um, so, Tara Vinen has a rush chance that's held. The Ducks press with two minutes left. Eventually, they do get one. At 19.05, Minchukov scores from Leeson. So, that ties the game up. Uh, but seconds later, with 41.2 seconds left, the Hawks get a power play. So, uh, it's 1-1 one, one after 1. That power play rolls over into the second period. The Ducks do finish the kill. The Hawks had the only shot on net three and a half minutes in. And at 3.54, Dickinson, on a great pass by Bedard again, buries one from the slot. It almost looked the same as the first one. Uh, Tara Vinen with the other assist on that one. So Tara Vinen gets a point tonight. That makes it a 2-1 lead for Chicago. Uh, Strom fires one wide from the slot. We get a power play for Anaheim. Minchikov has a shot that's held during that. That power play is killed off. The Hawks press at nine and a half minutes. The fans call one. The referee does not. Uh, Bedard has a rush chance to save. There's a near miss for Bertuzzi in close. Uh, the Ducks press with six minutes left. The shots are seven to four Anaheim with uh, five and a half minutes left. The Ducks then press with four minutes left. So it's two to one Chicago after two, but Anaheim's playing pretty well. Third period, we get a power play for Anaheim. Uh, that's killed off. The Ducks press after. And at 5-10, Anaheim would tie it. Kalorn scores from Zegris. So the Hawks would press to respond, but they're not getting a lot on the net. The shots are 4-1 to one for the Ducks at uh, 7 minutes. At 9.38, the Ducks get their first lead of the game. Uh, Carlson tips one in front. Kalorn and Zegris with the assist. So Kalorn and Zegris with pretty big third periods. And the Ducks with a 3-2 lead. The Hawks press with 8.5 minutes left. Good forechecking by the Ducks, though, when they get the chances. Goalie pull happens with 150 left. There's a timeout with 119 left. The Ducks hang on. They win 3-2. They have evened their record at 8-8-2. I don't know if you have a parade in Anaheim for a team that's 500 at this point in the season, but it's different. Uh, Chicago 6-12-1 with the loss. Uh, shots on net tonight, 10-7 Chicago in the first, 11-5 Anaheim in the second, 6-5 Anaheim in the third. The final shot's 24-20 for the Ducks. Power plays, Anaheim 0-2, Chicago 0-1. The hits, 27-13 Anaheim. Gibson saves 18 out of 20. Soderblom saves 21 out of 24. With the results tonight, the way they went, um, Chicago is now last on my power rankings board. So just, just a little bit of an Easter egg there for you. Does that qualify as an Easter egg? Sure it does. Sure it does. Yeah. All right, next up, the Islanders and the Calgary Flames. So the Flames kind of got pulled into playing Islanders game here, but in the third period, they, they did get some opportunities. Uh, it's Farlama versus Wolf. Both of these goalies had great games. Uh, early power play for the Islanders, that's killed off. The shots are three apiece at four and a half minutes. Uh, teams exchange rush chances. Miramanov with a near miss. Puck's cleared out. The Flames press with nine minutes left. Uh, Lee is robbed. The rebound's cleared. Kadri has a, sh a slot shot that is blocked. The Islanders press with six minutes left. The Flames press back with that next shift. There were opportunities, but it is 0-0 after one. Second period, Backlund's denied and close early. The teams exchange rushes, and then at 132, Engvall puts one past the screen on a good cycle. Uh, Mayfield and Chalowski with the assists. It's 1-0 for the New York Islanders. Flames press for response, but the shots are 4-2 to two for the Islanders at 7 minutes. Uh, the Flames press are kept to the outside. We get a power play for the Islanders. Paul Mary has a one-timer that's blocked. That power play is killed off. Uh, the Flames press after killing off that penalty. Zari tips one just over the bar from in front of the net. Uh, the Islanders press with 5 minutes left. The Flames get some pressure. They're kept to the outside. It's 1-0 Islanders after 2. Third period, early press by the Islanders. The team's trade rushes. Islanders press at four minutes, and I have to say this, big saves by Dustin Wolf should always lead to Hungry Like the Wolf getting played by the DJ in Calgary. Absolutely love that. I thought it was great. I got a chuckle out of it. It's perfect. Um, and it, it's kind of a banger of a song, really. Uh, Siplikov's denied on a fast break. Uh, we get a power play for Calgary. There's a near miss for Coronado, and then uh, Anderson wires one from the slot. Kadri and Pospisil with the assist at 8.16. That's the first point for Pospisil in 16 games. So the Flames need him to get going. Flames then look for the lead, but the shots are 9-5 to five for the New York Islanders with 8.5 minutes left. The Islanders press with 6.5 minutes left. 
Uh, the Flames get some pressure with four minutes left. This is where Varlamov earned his paycheck tonight. Backlund's robbed on a rebound. It's 1-1. We're going to overtime because it's an Islanders game, so why not? Uh, Flames control early. Coronado's denied on a rush. Sharon Govich can't bury one in close. Horvat fires one high on a rush. Uyghur fires one high on a rush as well. And then the Islanders draw a power play, and they don't score on it. So we're going to a shootout. In the shootout, uh, both Kuzmenko and Kirkland score for the Flames. So they win this one in a shootout 2-1. to one. Uh, the Flames 10-6-3 with the win. With the over with the shootout loss, the Islanders now 7-7-5. Seven, seven, and five. So, again, that's what they do. They, they accumulate the uh, the third column there of points in New York, and that's how they like it. Shots on net, 8-7 Calgary in the first, 8-7 Islanders in the second, 14-13 Calgary in the third, uh, 2-1 for Calgary in the overtime. Final shots, 31-29 for the Flames. Power plays, the Islanders 0-3. Calgary scored on the only power play they had. The hits, 24 to 18 for the Islanders. Varlamov, 30 saves on 31 shots. And Wolf, 28 saves on 29 shots. Honestly, uh, both goaltenders were fantastic in that one. That was a fun watch. All right, last game of the night, the Rangers in Vancouver. And I, I mean, if you're a Canuck fan, you probably knew what was going to happen. Like, Miller's out, Besser's out, Demko's still out. This is a team that's missing some of their, their major core star players, right? So it's Shesterkin versus Shilovs. But the Canucks score on their first shot early. 34 seconds in, Hughes. Really nice move to get it done, too. Scores from Hronik and Pedersen as Pedersen continues his improved play. Uh, the Rangers press at two minutes. And then on a face-off win, Zibanejad tips one in. Miller and Fox with the assists at two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, the shots are 5-3 to three for Vancouver at five minutes. Fox then has a screenshot. That's health. Rangers press at six minutes. We get a power play for New York. It had chances, but it was killed off. Rangers press with seven and a half minutes left, and eventually they score. Cooley, who is continuing this remarkable run offensively. Uh, Kako and Fox with the assists on that goal at 14.37. The Rangers look for another, but three minutes later exactly from the 2-1 to -one goal, Canucks make it 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Sherwood buries one on a three on a 2-on-1 -on rush. Pedersen and Susie with the assists at 17.37. So Pedersen with a couple of assists in the first period. 52.2 seconds left. The Canucks get a power play, so that's 2-2 tie. That rolls over into the second period. The Rangers finish the kill. New York then draws a power play. That was killed off. Uh, Lafreniere is denied right after that's done. Canucks get another turn on the power play. Hughes fires one wide late in it. That's killed off. And then Kako buries one from the inner slot. Cooley and Brodzinski with the assists at 8.45. The Canucks press to respond. The shots are 7-3 for the Rangers, though, with eight minutes left. At 13.02, Garland puts one past a screen on the rush. Uh, Joshua and Suter with the assists. That ties the game at three. We get two minutes of four on four. Teams exchange rush chances. It is 3-3 after the second period. Third period. Uh, the Rangers press at two minutes. Zach Jones has a chance that's held. Uh, momentum for New York. And Ray Ferraro kept talking about how well Vancouver was playing. And I'm not saying they didn't play well, considering the circumstances and everything. But I thought the Rangers were just the better team through a majority of this game. Uh, Lafreniere is denied at, on a breakaway there by Shilovs. Uh, shots are 4-1 to one for the Rangers at 5.5 minutes. The Canucks press. The Rangers doing a pretty good job of keeping them to the outside and blocking shots. Um, much more conservative period of hockey than the first two. And at 10.43, Kreider buries one in close. Uh, Smith and Zibanejad with the assist. So that makes it 4-3. to three. Uh, Canucks get a power play with 6.26 left. It gets killed off. It had some chances. The goalie pull happens with a minute and 45 seconds left, and the Rangers end up holding on. They win 4-3. They have a great road record. Uh, they go to 12-4-1 with the win. The Canucks finish this homestand 2-4. They are 9-6-3. So when I talked about the Canucks home record, and people were like, oh, it's not that, it's not that bad. It, 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 is, it is that bad. Um, so the shots on net for, for this game, the Rangers were in, in the lead all the way through. 15-9 in the first, 10-8 in the second, and 8-7 in the third. Final shots, 33-24 to 24 for the Rangers. Power plays, New York 0 for 2. Uh, Vancouver 0 for 3. The hits, 23-15. to 15. Vancouver, Shesterkin saves 21 out of 24. Shelov saved 29 out of 33. And I thought, honestly, Shelov's had a pretty good game. I wouldn't put this on him. But, uh, yeah, the Rangers showing just how strong they are on the road. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you may not have done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It's greatly appreciated. I will talk to you again soon.